Howdy, and welcome back to the Texas Bucket List. You know, Texas history has always fascinated me, but the last 200 years only scratches the surface of everything Texas has seen over time. Take the Isleta Mission in El Paso, for example. It's been a cornerstone of the story in these parts since 1682. El Paso, the furthest west you can go in the Lone Star State, has history that can be traced way back to the Native American days. This area was first colonized by the Spaniards, and some of their oldest establishments can be found in the Sun City on the Mission Trail. That includes the Isleta Mission, boasting over 300 years of history. This building has only been here since 1851, but the Tigua community has been here since 1680. There's no disputing that. Ed Shugart is a former newspaper journalist, and he grew up in El Paso. Since 2018, he's volunteered at the Isleta Mission to help tell the story that starts all those years ago. As far as I know, it's the first permanently established community in what is present-day Texas. It's crazy to think that this was established 100 years before Washington sailed over the Delaware. Yeah, it is. In the thick of America being colonized by Europeans, Spain had a heavy presence in the Southwest, where Native Americans were once prominent. There were competing European interests all over North America. Each of them had their own exploration efforts, settlement efforts, and all of them dealt rather harshly with the Native American populations. They didn't consider the Native populations to be equals in any way. The Spanish, in some ways, were trying to be more accommodating, but early on, they weren't. Isleta and all the missions on the El Paso Mission Trail were settled after the Pueblo Revolt. Led by a religious leader named Pope, it was the most effective uprising by indigenous Pueblo people. They killed hundreds of Spanish soldiers, civilians, and most of the priests. And so the survivors of that initial attack came south to here. The revolt kept Spain out of New Mexico for over a decade. Pope had made certain promises about, you know, how their gods would reward them for doing this. And, you know, things didn't get easier for them. He wasn't a kind of leader that would help the Pueblo stay united. And so eventually they saw that, you know, this isn't working out so great either. Over time, the two cultures came together. I'm not familiar in detail with how the cooperation began and continued so that they could live together peacefully but that did happen. Certainly there's a different perspective between Europeans who live in this area and the Native Americans who live here. There's still disagreement about some of that history. As is with all history across yeah. America right now. <laughs> yeah. As they say, the past is in the past. Today these let the people use the mission to tell their collective story. Nearly all of them are Christian or Catholic. They also have held on to that part of their history and culture that made them distinct from others. The Spaniards took a bit of a different approach after the revolt, and that's helped maintain the mission for all these years. They believe these people are God's children as well, just like they were. And so uh, they wanted to bring the good news as they saw it to a new group of people because that's what Christians are told in the Bible by Matthew, to go out and spread this message and let people know about Jesus Christ. That's been the enduring relationship in this particular community. It hasn't been other places. Some places the Native Americans have rejected it. Today, there's even a Native American saint, Saint Kateri Tecaquitha. She was Mohawk, so of course she was in the eastern part of the United States. The church community here is made up of Native Americans, and so they take pride in the fact that there's a Native American who was named a saint. Saint Kateri Tecaquitha has a presence at the Isleta Mission, along with other Native American touches. Originally built in 1851, the church sits on the original site of the mission, which actually was in Mexico. Surprisingly, it wasn't a battle or a treaty that changed things. It was an act of God. All three of the churches that you'll see on the mission trail here were originally built on the southern bank of the Rio Grande. So in Mexico? Yeah, in Mexico. But the flood of 1829 was severe enough it actually changed the course of the river and it left these three churches on the northern side, which at the time didn't mean much, but of course today it means the difference between being in the United States or being in Mexico. Wow, that's, that's right. amazing. Yeah. 
Between the history, the people, and the overall implications this place has had on our state and country, the Isleta Mission in El Paso is a storied stop on the Texas bucket list. This was the beginning of permanent European and Native American settlement in this area. What a jewel we have in these missions.